नमो नमः प्रणाम आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक केंद्रीय संस्कृत विश्वविद्यालय भोपाल नाट्यशास्त्र अनुसंधान केंद्र नाट्यशास्त्र व्याख्यान माला आई वुड ऑल्सो लाइक टू थैंक आचार्य प्रकाश पांडे जी देवेंद्र जी फॉर giving the opportunity to give lecture on one of the topic from natya shastra today's topic is bhavana se bhav tak and bhava bhi vyakti actually both are different topics and I have prepared some 60 to 70 pages of notes on this topics. Let us see in one hour how much we can do it. So the first we will talk about the bhavana se bhavata. We will define the bhavana. How this bhavana converts into the bhava in natya will be first presented. man's life is primarily connected with the different emotions like fear anger love sorrow etc known as bhavana samvedana chitta vritti or vikaras the permanent impression of which are already there on his mind due to the sense of birth that he takes it is from this point of view that a man is said to be totally different from an animal on whose mind there are no such impression as such a man's life is full of different incidents giving rise to happiness anxiety pleasure sorrow and feeling of fear or any other feelings those are manodashas manasanskara manovega or also known as a vritti this is so because a man meets with his friend and thereby he gets pleasure the separation of a child children a separation of from a, of a child from his mother gives rise to sorrow and death of a beloved person also results in sorrow of a person the impression of all these types are there in the normal working of a man in minor or major degree the mental impressions that means the manobhavas or the bhavanas of every person go on changing as per the situation and the combination of sattva raja and tama qualities or the gunas in him these qualities are there in the mind of a person or the personality of a person the ratio of which may vary from a person to person the bhagavad gita properly described the qualities of this sattva raja and tama guna the this guna tattva or gunatva or gunavah this trigunyam the three basic characteristics or the attributes that exist in all things including human body and human mind in this context of guna it should be remembered that these qualities do not stay apart from each other they stay together in a person in different degrees naturally the person actions means the karma the cheshta the anga vikshepa the prakruti the activities the karyakram all depends upon the dominating percentage of this qualities that is gunas and situation means the avasthas or paristhiti or the bhava when the pure knowledge in the sense organs it is held that the sattva guna is getting predominant when however the passion or the rajo increases a man becomes greedier 
and is inclined to do several activities. But whenever the delusion or the tamas increases in a person, one does not feel like working, one forgets one's own duties and indulges more into sleep or mistakes. Thus, Indian philosophy is primarily based on this combination of five element panchatattvas, Prithvi, Aap, Tej, Vayu, Akash, three kinds of qualities, Sattva, Raja and Tama, five organs of action and five organs of knowledge, Shabda, Sparsha, Rupa, Rasagandha, etc. And it is due to this that the thought, the speech, and the physical actions of a person take place as per his physical constitution. And thus, bhavana are reflected through the moments in human life. So, antargata vikarasya bahya prakati karanam anga vikshepaha The external manifestation of internal feeling are the Anga Vikshepa. So thus the body is the medium to transcend the body. The Sharira or the Tanu is a primary tool. It is also a term of a reference. Physically it is made up of bones or flashes etc. But the body and mind are interdependent and mutually affecting and effective. So while talking about the Sharira and the Mana, Tanu and the mind, I remember one very beautiful Subhashita which says, Darshane sparshane apiva, shravane bhashane vapi, yatra dravet antarangam sasneha iti kathyate. The word sneha or the love is defined in Subhashita very appropriately as the melting of the inner working of the mind at the sight, just one sight of a particular thing or hearing a particular thing or by a speech or by touch. And this very idea of Subhashita is correctly expressed by Kalidasa in the fifth act of the Shakuntala which clearly said, states that on seeing charming objects and hearing sweet sounds, a human being, though possessed of happiness, remembers in his heart, without consciousness, beforehand, friendship of other lives that are permanent through mental impressions. So these bhavanas. In Indian arts, in all the kalas, where the samvedana or the vikara these manodashas or manasanskara, manovega or the bhavana, etc. of the normal life are converted or titled as the bhava. Now, both the term the natya and the bhava are relevant to each other. And to point out the supreme importance of a natya in dramaturgy, Bharata points out that in drama, there should be a faithful imitation of the actions of a different types of people, the description of a different situation and it should be adequately equipped with the different sentiments. It's further also defined that there should be imitation of the actions of the people of Seven Island. So in the Nati Shastra, um, Panchama Veda, it says, that bhavishyatascha lokasya sarva karmanu darshakam trailokyasya sarvasya natyam bhavanu kirtanam anukirtanam loka vrittanu karanam natyam etan mayakritam sapta dvipanu karanam natyam etan bhavishyati yena anukaranam anukaranam etan natyam etan mayakritam Brahmarshanam cha vigneyam natyam vrittanta darshakam. Rushta samabhavan sarme karma bhavanu darshanat. So, in all the definition of Natya Shastra, Bharata uses the word anukruti, anukaranam, anukirtanam, 
अनुदर्शन अवस्थानुकृतिर्नाट्यम इट मीन अनुकरण द इमिटेशन बट इमिटेशन डजन मीन द एक्चुअल इमिटेशन द लिटरल इमिटेशन दैट विल लीड टू दि हास्य मोकर सो इन विच वे द इमिटेशन हेज टू बी अनुकर्तन Bharata mentions that whatever be the nature of a person endowed with happiness and sorrow it should be shown on the stage by the actions of the body etc and that is known as a natya from this is it is evident that drama is entirely based on different emotions so long long as we don't get into the correct idea of the bhava as he said natyam bhavanukirtanam so the word bhava is very important to understand to imitate those impressions or the feelings in the drama and hence it will not be possible for a person to get the correct picture of the emotion as such we therefore first think of the bhava but let's also understand the word anukirtanam anukathana anukrishti anucharita it's not the imitation or mirroring of actual actuality or a imitation of single ideal or an absolute this recreation diminutive sculptor or monumental sculptor mural or miniature painting a full drama or lyric a full theatrical spectacle or spe- or a solo performance which becomes becomes prism for seeing and hearing many colors all only to suggest or evoke the single unified luminosity that is rasa from beginning to end the word anukirtanam anukaranam etc etc can be discussed or should be discussed with the interpretations and interpreters of the bharata in any other separate lecture bharata further adds that in the drama there should be the description of the natural character of a person endowed with pleasure and sorrow and this is particularly re- represented by the speech physical activities and the others from all these descriptions in bharata's natya shastra it is quite evident that the drama is principally dependent on the emotions that is the bhava and so long as we don't get the correct idea of the emotions it will be very difficult to understand in the sangraha rasa bhava abhinaya dharmi vritti pravrutaya siddhi swara tatha atodyam ganam randascha sangraha the bhava is the second element given in the natya shastra the etymology of the bhava is to be given from the root bhu by the use of instrumental suffix which ultimately means a state which is the cause of an emotion or a state that turns into an emotion in the nirukta itself there is a reference to the view of varshayani that there are six modification of bhava as jayate asti viparinamate vardhini apakshayati and vinashyati the jayate means to rise asti is to exist vinashyati is uh, viparinamati sorry is transforms vardhini to increase apakshayati is to decrease and vinashyati parishes following all these above view it is possible to state that the mental conditions also assumes the above six modification of emotions thus the bhava or bhavanas are always rising existing transforming increasing decreasing and also perishing
Consequently, in order, ordinary life, whatever emotions or mental impressions are experienced by the people, they bhavana, they turn into bhava only when they are properly represented by a skillful actor with the help of his creative and imaginative power and which naturally brings it to the stage of imitation. These two principles that is a creative power and imaginative power are vitally connected with the mental impressions. But when the actor demonstrates or reveals the emotions by means of his two powers, that revelation is termed as bhava. Bharata in his Natya Shastra offers three wings for this bhava. Whether rasa derives of bhava or bhava derives from rasa or rasa and bhava are mutually interdependent and arise it reciprocally. Bharata gives beautiful three to four verses. Na bhava hino sti rasa, na bhavo rasa varjita. Paras parakruta se this tayo abhinaya bhavet. There can be no rasa without the bhava and no bhavas without the sentiments following it. And dotting the histrionic representation, they result from their interaction itself. The second verse says, Vyanjana aushadir sanyogad yatha annaswadutam nayet evam bhava rasashaiva bhavayanti parasparam. Just as a combination of auxiliary cooked eatables, vyanjana and rice, imparts good taste to the food in totality. So, psychological states and the sentiments cause one another to manifest themselves, that is bhavayanti. Furthermore, yatha bijad bhaved vruksho, vrukshad pushpam phalam tatha, yatha mulam rasa sarve te bhyo bhava vyavasthitaha. Just as tree grows from a seed, and the flowers and fruits from a tree go to the sentiments are the source or the root of all bhavas and likewise the psychological states exist as the source of all sentiments therefore according to bharata rasa derives from a bhava and even abhinav gupta in his abhinav bharati agrees with this that drushyate hi bhavebhyo rasanam abhinivruti na tu rasebhyo bhavanam abhinivruti riti the theatrical experience emerges from this one seed that is a bij this term bij is used is used in the context of with the relationship of the rasa and bhava and also this bij term is used in structuring of drama that is iti vrutta or while discussing about the plot of the drama by bharata the use of the word bij clearly echoes the upanishadic thought and to go deeper into this upanishadic echoes in Nati Shastra, one needs an absolutely different lecture on Nati Shastra separately. After discussing the bhavana, let us come to the word bhava. Bharata asks in the seventh chapter is why are the bhavas are so called? Or it is because bhavayanti, which pervade, hence they are called bhavas. Or bhavita, vasita and krita, which are synonyms. And bhava is an instrument of causation of this. Or I mean say, bhavanti iti bhavaha, kimva bhavayanti iti bhavaha. Because sthira chitta vritti, hone ke karan aap usse bhav kehti ho. Ya to vachika bhinay se jo bhavayanti, एक्सप्रेस होता है इस वजह से आप उसे भाव कहते हो वेरी ब्यूटिफुली रिवील्ड बाय 
भक्ति अभिनव गुप्ताचार्य वाग अंग सत्वोपेतान काव्यार्थान भावयंती इति भावा अ पोएट्री और द मीनिंग ऑफ द वर्ड आर रिवील्ड थ्रू वाक अंग एंड सत्व दे वाचिक आंगिक एंड सात्विक अभिनय इज नोन एज भाव ही ऑल्सो डिफाइन्स वेरी ब्यूटिफुली सेवन चैप्टर द वेरी फर्स्ट श्लोक गिव्स अस द डेफिनेशन ऑफ भाव इट सेज विभावैरारुत यो अर्थो अनुभावैस्तु गम्यते वाग अंग सत्वाभिनय ही स भाव इति संहिता when the meanings are captivated by determinants and consequences are made to pervade that is gamyate and presented by words gesture and representation of sattva to the heart of the spectators are known as bhava for the reasons vaganga mukharagena sattvena abhinayena cha kaver antargatam bhavam bhavayan bhava uchyate as in the sense the inner idea of the playwright or the poet is made to pervade the mind of the spectators by means of words gestures colors of the face and representation of the sattva they are known as bhav also there is one more shlok नाना द्रव्य बहुभिर् व्यंजन भाव्यते यथा एवं भाव भावयंती रसान अभिनय ही सह एज दे कॉज द सेंटिमेंट्स रिलेटिंग टू वेरियस काइंड ऑफ हिस्ट्रियोनिक रिप्रेजेंटेशन टू परवेड द हार्ट ऑफ द स्पेक्टेटर दे आर कॉल्ड भावास बाय दोज हु प्रोड्यूस द ड्रामास from this definition of the natya shastra it becomes very clear that the poet or the play writer author tries to reveal different emotion by his poetic compositions an actor however makes the demonstration of those sentiments on the stage by physical acting by speech by facial expression and satvik element this revelation bhavita bhavayati is responsible for calling it as bhava this is connected directly with the mental impressions and when these emotions become universalized sadharanikaranam or generalized then only it becomes fit or the enjoyment it is due to this that in the scientific sense this mental activities are termed as bhava just as in the drama the actor are supposed to act properly so as to delineate the original characters in the similar manner it is also necessary to bring out the internal working of the mind of the poet or dramatist so the poet the plot of the drama the poetry are also very important part of the bhav and this position is correctly represented in the agni purana it is stated that in this world of poetry which has no end the poet alone is to be accepted as the creator or the producer he presents this world in the manner in which he likes it and then actor represents the bhav the bhoja in his saraswati kanthabaranam has gone one step ahead and held that the internal working of mind of a poet is more important in a poetry of the dramatis in case of a drama it however the poet loves if shringara sentiment the entire world will be full of sentiments but if however he has no attraction for the shringara sentiments or everything in the drama or in the poetry would be devoid of the feelings so 
कवेर अंतर्गतम भावम भावयन भाव इच्छति इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन दिस कॉन्टेक्स्ट इट इज वेरी नेसेसरी टू नो द व्यू पॉइंट ऑफ अभिनव गुप्ता ऑन द नाट्यशास्त्र ही टोल्ड और ही होल्ड्स दैट द एस्थेटिक एंजॉयमेंट इज नॉट फाउंड इन द एक्ट इन फैक्ट ही इज द मीन्स ऑफ द एक्सेप्ट मीन्स फॉर द aesthetic enjoyment of the spectators it must be remembered here that the actor is called as a patra or the one vessel or the glass and the second character in the drama an ordinary vessel is not able to taste the wine contained in it it is only a means for tasting the wine particularly mint for someone else the varied permanent emotions such as love sorrow etc are dormant in the mind of the spectators and it is acting or a dramatic representation and such other activities that actually serve the purpose of awakening the dominant permanent emotions whereas the ananda vardhana has held that the poet is just like a spectator the rasa that existing in the poet is like the seed or the beeja which is the root cause of a tree if poet is the full of erotic sentiments then the dramatic poem is like a tree and the dramatic representation by the actor is like the flower and spectators aesthetic enjoyment is like the fruit and consequently everything is full of shringara rasa whereas abhinav gupta takes a firm stand that there can be no rasa in the actor according to this view of abhinav gupta it also gets supports from the pandit raj jagannath where rasa gang of the rasa gangadhar he holds that shama is not possible in the actor because we do not accept that revelation of rasa ever takes place in the actor with the due respect of these authorities the abhinav gupta charya or the pandit raj jagannath i heard by express the view that an actor can be a seat of the rasa this view will be more uh, convincing to the persons who have personally witnessed many dramas and part of the acting or part of the dance both the chapter 6th and 7th rasa and bhav of the natya shastra are a link between the realm of philosophy and aesthetics of mysticism and aesthetics we just now discussed with a few references from the sanskrit text the bhav the word bhav many later texts also defines bhav we cannot touch all of them in this lecture from this bhav i will be moving now on to the definition where said vibhav anubhav because with the combination of the vibhav anubhav these bhavas are formed and expressed so what is the vibhav vibhav is used for the sake of clear knowledge that is a vijnana it is synonymous to the karana nimitta or the hetu means they are the reasons bahavo artha vibhavyante vag ang abhinayashraya anena yasmat tenayam vibhav eti samunitah as many things are determined by this through words gesture and sattva it is named named as vibhav yani जहाँ पे अनेक अर्थों का बोध होता है जिससे उसे विभाव कहते हैं देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ विभाव आलम्बन विभाव एंड उद्दीपन विभाव द फर्स्ट आलम्बन विभाव मीन्स वन हु अरोज अराउज इज रति एक्सेट्रा स्थाई भाव द नायकाज एंड द नायिकाज कैन बी कॉल्ड एज अ आलम्बन विभाव एंड अदर्स विच ब्रिंग्स लाइट टू द रति एक्सेट्रा आर उद्दीपन विभाव जगन्नाथ पंडित जगन्नाथ गिवस अ वेरी ब्यूटिफुल एग्जाम्पल ऑफ उद्दीपन विभाव 
निमित्तानि च उद्दीपकानि इति बोध्यम एंड शारंग देव इन इज संगीत रत्नाकर गिव्स फोर टाइप्स ऑफ उद्दीपन उद्दीपन विभावास दीज फोर टाइप्स ऑफ उद्दीपन विभावास आर आलंबनगत गुण आलंबनगत चेष्टा आलंबनगत अलंकार विभावास एंड आलंबनगत तटस्थता विभावास नाउ दीज आलंबनगत गुण विभावास हु आर दोस विच आर दोस दे कॉल इट यौवन रूप लावण्य सौंदर्य अभिरूप मार्दव एंड सौक सौकुमार्य दिस सेवन आर नोन एज आलंबन गत गुण विभावास वेर इज आलंबन गत चेष्टाज आर लीला विलास विच्छति विभ्रम किल किंचित मोट्टाइत कुट्टमित बिब्बोक ललित एंड विभ्रम दिस टेन आर आलंबनगत चेष्टा विभावास देर आर फोर टाइप्स ऑफ आलंबनगत अलंकार दोज आर वस्त्र अलंकार भूषण अलंकार माल्यालंकार एंड अंग लेपन अलंकार इन द अलंबनगत तटस्थता दे रिलेट टू देश काल आश्रित तटस्थता देश काल आश्रित इज अवस्थानुसार चंद्रिका वे वेर वी देश काल दे हैव गिवन सम ऑफ दी एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ चंद्रिका धारागृह चंद्रोदय कोकिल आलाप माकंद मंद मारुत षटपद स्पंद लता मंडप भूगेह दीर्घिका जलादरव प्रसाद गर्भ प्रसाद गर्भ सॉरी संगीत क्रीडा शैल सारित एक्सेट्रा शारदा तनय इन इज भाव प्रकाश गिव्स एट टाइप्स ऑफ उद्दीपन विभावास ललित ललिता भास स्थितिर चित्र रुक्ष खर निंदित एंड विकृत दिस ऑल विभासा विभावास आर रिलेटेड टू दि रसा stimulate the sthayi bhavas and delights them and therefore there are termed as the vibhavas karana nimitta hetu reason these are the few subdivisions which i have given it just now there are many more books i have just quoted two books one from the sangeet ratnakara and another from the sharada एक्सटर्नल मेनिफेस्टेशन or the movements means which is bhavana sakshatkar or the pratiti is recognized as the anubhavas thus when the feelings are manifested by the angika vachika or the satvika abhinaya along with the shakha ang and upanga are acknowledged or known as the anubhavas भरत डिफाइन्स अनुभावाज एज वागांगाभिनयने यत्तु अर्थ अनुभाव्यते शाखांगोपांग संयुक्तस्तु अनुभावस्तः स्मृतः अनुभावयन्ती मीन्स द स्पेक्टेटर्स मेक देम फील आफ्टरवर्ड्स द हिस्ट्रियोनिक रिप्रेजेंटेशन बाय मीन्स ऑफ वर्ड्स जेस्चर एंड सत्वर इज द अनुभाव दैट इज द कॉन्सिक्वेंस भरत ऑल्सो एड्स लोक स्वभाव संसिद्ध लोक यात्रागामी अनुभाव विभावाश्च ज्ञेयास्तु अभिनय बुध द विभाव एंड अनुभावाज आर नोन बाय द वाइज टू बी थिंग्स विच आर क्रिएटेड बाय ह्यूमन नेचर एंड आर इन अकर्डन्स विद द वेज ऑफ ह्यूमन नेचर एंड विद द वेज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड 
सो वॉट इज इम्पॉर्टंट इज अ लोक स्वभाव लोक यात्र लोक कर्मानुभाव ऑल्सो ही मेन्शन द यो अर्थो हृदय संवादी तस्य भावो रसोद्भव शरीर व्याप्य तेन शुष्क काष्ठम इवान्वित द भाव प्रोसीडिंग्स फ्रॉम द थिंग्स विच इज कॉन्नीन कॉन्नियल टू द हार्ट is the source of the sentiment and it pervades the body just as fire spreads over dry wood now these anubhavas which is later writer called it as anupaschat bhavo yasya so anubhavah it means those which are after the bhavas are anubhavas now these anubhavas are karya roop means action oriented are uh, but according to bharata these anubhavas are reasons not results because they derived with the bhavas and they dissolves with the bhavas according to agni purana these anubhavas can be achieved by body mind and words and intellect and for therefore there are four ranks of the anubhava according to agni purana these four ranks are chittarambha shariraarambha vagaarambha and buddhyaarambha the chittarambha anubhavas are of two types purusha and strena the masculine and feminine the purusha gata mano anubhavas are of eight types shobha vilas madhurya sthairya gambhirya lalita audarya and tejas and stri gata mano anubhavas are 12 bhav how bhav hela shobha kanti dipti madhurya dhairya pragalbya audarya sthairya and gambhirya the sharirarambha anubhavas the movements of body parts of the sharira there are 12 types leela vilasa vichitti vibrama kila kinchita muttaitam kuttamitam bibboka lalita vikruta kridita and keli the vagarambha anubhavas by the speech are of 12 types again आलाप विलाप संलाप प्रलाप अनुलाप अपलाप संदेश अतिदेश निर्देश आदेश उपदेश एंड व्यपदेश देन कम्स द बुद्ध्यारंभ अनुभाव दे आर थ्री टाइप्स रीति वृत्ति एंड प्रवृत्ति अकॉर्डिंग टू नाट्यशास्त्र भावाज आर जॉइंट विथ विभाव and anubhavas both vibhavas and anubhavas anubhavas are seen in this trilokya and based on that trilokya's vibhava and anubhava and the bhavas are represented the same is seen in the natya also also and that is what we are talking of bhavana to bhava भावना से भाव तक की सफर जो है वो समझने के लिए लोक वृत्त लोक परिमाण लोक पर, पर उपदेश लोक प्रमाणों की बहुत जरूरत है जैसे वेद प्रमाण लोक प्रमाण ये दोनों के बारे में बात करते वक्त भरत लोक प्रमाण को बहुत ही महत्व देते हैं सो so, विभाव और अनुभावों के बारे में बात हो जाने के बाद अब हम बात करेंगे द ड्यूरोबल ड्यूरेबल स्थाई भाव द स्थाई भाव आर एट इन नंबर The Sanchari Bhavas are 33 in numbers, 
and the Satvik Bhara Bhavas are seven in numbers. Hence, we understand that there are 49 Bhavas altogether, which are capable of drawing out the sentiments from the play or the dance or the sculptures or the painting. The sentiments arise from them when they are imbued with the quality of the universality that is a samanya that is the sadharanikaran the commonness it means bhavon ke samanya guno ke yog se hi samajik ke hriday mein ras ki anubhuti hoti hai ab kehte hain ki sthayi bhav hi ras tak pahunch sakte hain baaki koi nahi pahunch sakte bhavon ke ye vibhav विभागों में स्थायी भाव या विचारी भाव सात्विक भाव इतने अच्छे अच्छे हैं तो सिर्फ स्थायी भाव ही क्यों रस तक पहुंच सकते हैं सो वेरी ब्यूटीफुल वाई द स्थायी भाव इज रिच इज टू द रस एंड नो अदर भाव इज रिच इज टू रस टू क्लैरिफाई दिस द पोजिशन ऑफ द स्थायी भाव भरत हैज गिवन अ वेरी गुड स्टांजा ही सेट यथा नाण नृपति ही शिष्याण च यथा गुरु एवं ही सर्वभावान भाव स्थायी Mahaniha. The This stanza states that just as among the people a king is great and among the pupils a teacher is great, likewise among all the bhavas, the sthai bhavas are regarded as a great. When the sthai bhavas developed by the combination of vibhav, anubhav, and vyabhichari bhava, then only the sthai bhava attains the position of the rasa. it's further said that though all the persons are endowed with hands feet belly etc a typical person who is endowed with the quality of family character knowledge activity and skill alone alone reaches the position of a king and not the persons of meager intellect the person of tender or meager intellect are required to assume the position of servants if this illustration is born in mind one will realize the importance of sthai bhava assuming the position of the king and the other bhavas serving him as a servants there is one more stanza in bharata's natya shastra which states that of many rasas which are used in one and the same word that rasa whose compass is very large should be treated as abiding rasa or the sthayi bhavas and others are just the transitory moments or the sanchari bhavas in this context it is again to be remembered that exact imports of this work is that a state of mind that the chitta vritti that spreads over the basic plot should appear as the abiding one but that state of mind which is connected only with an incident here and there in the plot of the drama will appear as a transitory or a momentary this leads one to the conclusion that there is actually no contradiction between the principal plot and the subordinate incidents depending depicting in the drama this is how the abhinav gupta understands the words it should be noted only incidentally that the point involving no contradiction between the principal plot and the subordinate incident is cleverly introduced by abhinav gupta uh, in him or uh, this note were the uh, comments of bahu naam samaveta naam roopam yas bhavet bahu etc so as regards to this words bahu naam samaveta naam there is interpretation one more interpretation offered by the author some others they take the stand that of many emotional states in their forms of states of mind that one whose form is found to be large is the sthayi bhava and that it is a rasa because it is a capable of being made into a rasa the others are called the transient or the sanchari one more interpretation of the same which agrees with the second interpretation the question arises whether sai bhava itself can attain the status of rasa 
इट मीन्स द स्थाई भाव आर इट सेल्फ रस अभिनव गुप्त पॉइंट आउट दैट द रस इज कंप्लीटली डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द परमानेंट इमोशन दैट इज अ स्थाई भाव लाइक लव सोरो एक्सेट्रा इट के नॉट बी मेनटेन विद शंकु का हु स्टेट दैट रस इज एन अप्रीहेंशन ऑफ द परमानेंट इमोशन ऑफ समबडी एल्स and that it is so called because it is an object of relish and abhinav gupta further adds that rasa is not an objective thing in the real world as it is a coterminous with the process of aesthetic relish and it ceases to exist at the moment the process of relish is over na to siddha swabahat स्वभावा हा तत् कलिका एव तु चर्वणा रितेरिका कलावलंबी रसा अनलेस वन इज एक्चुअली एक्सपीरियंसिंग इट रस डज नॉट एक्सिस्ट द एसेंस ऑफ रस कन्सिस्ट इन एस्थेटिक एन्जॉयमेंट इट इज द परमनंट इमोशन द स्थाई बाबा दैट इज ब्रॉट टू द स्टेट ऑफ एस्थेटिक रिलेश विच इज अ फॉर्म ऑफ अ नॉलेज टोटली फ्री फ्रॉम द वर्ल्डली डिफिकल्टीज from worries narrow personal interests etc by the combination of this vibhav anubhav and avyavichari bhava this thai bhavas attains unity in the mind of the spectator or the reader in the real appreciation of this rasa abhinav gupta has taken precautions to note down some important states in the aesthetic experience such as attitude of a true spectator the generalized nature of what he sees on the stage the extraordinary nature of the cognition of the rasa the absence of any physical activity on the part of the spectator and presence of mind in him of a com- contemplative attitude and all these steps are pointed out abhinay gupta in his lochana for the sthai bhava to reach is to the rasa abhinay gupta also shows how every living being right from his birth is endowed with nine forms of consciousness that is mental states of permanent nature whenever it is said all beings are very eager to enjoy pleasure one will have to conclude that there is no living being who is devoid of vasana or the sanskaras the impression of this nine mental states here one will have to say that in someone of these mental states may be predominant while in other it may not be predominant to the same extent what abhinav gupta means to say it the vasanas and the sanskaras are the same as the sthai bhavas only they are awakened by the acting of the actor accompanied by the vibhava anubhava and vyabhichari bhava it is only due to this that one will have to remember in this context the famous line of the shakuntala bhava stirani gnanantara sarudayani hence in the awakening of the mental states the role played by the vasana and the memory can hardly be denied in watching the performance of a play in which the sthai bhava predominates one corresponding sthai bhava rati lying latent is awakened by the powerful impact of the vibhava etc after lying latent is awakened by the powerful impact of vibhavas after it is awakened or activated there takes place hrudaya samvad the sympathetic response this hrudaya samvad represents the state just be, the, before the tadatmya the tadatmya becomes possible through the process of sadharani karanam that is the universalization of idealization and this makes all the event in the play or the dance as impersonal and universal when the universal identification takes place with the situation being portrayed correctly it gives rise to the rasa charvana so the sthai reaches to the rasa and spectators takes the aswad in the relish 
of sentiments the basic concept of the sky bubble line latent in the spectator's mind is very much important abhinava specifically holds that spectators do not enjoy the sthai bhava present in the character or the actor but the sthai bhava activated in their own mind and vibhavas reaches to the rasa and relishes the rasa what is dasharupaka again gives one of the very beautiful example of this sthai bhava he said viruddhaira viruddhaira bhavair vichchidyate nayaha atma bhava nayati anyan sa sai lavana karaha in the dasharupaka dhananjay gives this importance of the sthai bhava in the relish of rasa the sthai bhava is that bhava which is not cut up by favorable or unfavorable bhava and himself takes it that means accepts other bhavas in himself playing the role of the ocean the ocean accepts the different rivers of the different colors and different tastes coming to him from different directions and they lose their identity in the ocean here the favorable or the unfavorable bhava comes to the sthai bhava and loses its identity in it in the sthai bhava here the position of the sthai bhava is compared to the ocean and the position of other bhavas is compared to the river ganges ganga jamuna etc getting merged or losing their identity in the ocean in the appreciation of the position of the sthai bhava dhananjaya dr kani points out in his history of sanskrit uh, poetics that the sthai bhava is like the ocean which may be now and then disturbed by other bhavas but always retains its own position so sthai bhava is that dominant mood which is not broken up altogether by other bhavas and makes the other bhava subordinate subordinate to itself the do, the sthai bhava is the sthai moods the dominant moods that may be aroused by dramatic representation brought to a state of pleasure release are eight in numbers given by natya shastra rati hasascha shokascha krodhotsaho bhayam tatha jugutsa vismayashiti sthai bhava pratyateta some also add the ninth sthai bhava known as a shama just as a beverage panna is accomplished through various season articles and herbs so the permanent mood that is the sthai bhava reinforced upagata by various bhavas attains the state of rasa is called because its essence exists in the taste it should be noted here that all the terms which refer to or describe the essence of rasa such as rasana charvana aswad all are etymologically referred to the physical pleasure of taste bharata also explains that the sthai bhava are the basis of rasa because it attains mastery among 49 different bhavas which naturally rest upon it rest upon it as being presumably an principal theme or the mood in the compositions in the aesthetic pleasure the vibhava brings the sthai bhavas to the enjoyment of rasika the aesthetically receptive reader or spectator and thereby convert it into the rasa but they must be generalized and should have no specific relation to a particular individual rati naam pramodatmika rutu malya anulepana aabharana ap var bhavana anubhavana prakriti kulya dibe vibhavai rati as abhibhav anubhav vyapichari the same is discussed in the chapter number 7 of the love laughter 
sorrow, anger, vigor, fear, jugupsa and astonishment with the vibhav, anubhav and vavichari bhav in the seventh chapter. Detailed description is given by the Bharata and the followers. Here I remember Guruji made me learn uh, by heart, let me say by heart, the whole sixth and seventh chapter in 1989 or so, and also gifted me the 1000 rupees each. I think uh, time is up and we have got 40 may 35 more pages to go and discuss on the sattvic bhavas and sanchari bhavas we will have a second session on the sattvic bhavas and uh, vyabhichari bhavas and then we will conclude with the bhava vivyakti here bhavana se bhava tak हमने देखा कि रोज बरोज जिंदगी में जो भावनाएं, जो चित्तवृत्तियां, जो विकार हमारे अंदर मन में आते हैं, उसी को हम वाणी, शरीर या सत्व द्वारा प्रेजेंट करते हैं। तो उसे भावना कहा गया है। और उसी को जब नट, शिल्पकार, चित्रकार, नृत्य कार उसी चित्तवृत्ति उसी विकार को जब प्रेक्षकों तक सहृदय प्रेक्षकों तक पहुंचाने की कोशिश करता है तो उन चित्तवृत्तियों को भाव कहा जाता है सो भावना से भाव तक जब हम निकले हैं ये पूरे प्रवास में हमने पहले भावना क्या होती है वो समझा वही भावनाएं जब नाट्य शास्त्र के आधार से भाव कैसे कह लिए जाते हैं वो समझा भावों को समझा उन्हीं भाव के आधार रूप विभाव और अनुभावों को समझा और थोड़े बहुत टेक्स्ट के आधारों से शास्त्रों के आधारों से हमने स्थाई भावों को समझने की कोशिश की। मैं आज का ये लेक्चर यहीं समाप्त करती हूँ। यहीं पे आपकी आज्ञा चाहती हूँ। दूसरे भाग में हम देखेंगे सात्विक भाव और संचारी भावों की अभिव्यक्ति और उसके पश्चात भावाभिव्यक्ति के साथ नृत्य रसम, नाट्य रसम, शिल्प रसम एवं विविध कलाओं में रसा रसानुभूति का वर्णन हम देखेंगे। I again once more thank the अनुसंधान केंद्र for giving me this opportunity। नमस्कार, नमो नमः Can't end it.